There's one more thing we need to do now before we begin to solve electric circuits. We need to define what is an electric circuit and what are the components of a circuit. That's what we'll do in this clip. And then we will begin to solve electric circuits. The electric circuit is a pathway for charges to flow. And there are three components. You need a power source or a voltage source, some kind of electric device, and a switch. Let's look at each in turn. For the voltage source, we use a battery. Now this is the symbol here that we use, and this represents actually the first one here, a cell. When you have a single cell, that's the symbol. When you put several of these together, you have what they call the battery. Uh, we'll use either in our practice problems. Now notice that the longer side will be positive and the smaller side is negative. So here's the positive and the negative. And the current only flows in one direction when we use a battery. And so it's called DC current or direct current. All of that must be memorized. Now the battery supplies a potential difference. And as I've said before, this is often called an electromotive force or an EMF, and it's given the symbol E as shown. Now the problem is it sounds like then potential difference is a force, but it isn't. Now sometimes it is helpful to think of it as a force-like quantity that pushes charge you know, through the wire, but it is not a force. Now next we need an electrical device. Now I've already mentioned before that this converts electrical energy to other forms of energy. Now, what do we mean by this? Well, you might use a light. might be in the circuit as the electrical device. Maybe you'll have uh, some kind of a heater. Maybe you'll have mechanical energy, like a, a motor or a buzzer making sound. But what we do when we use these electrical circuits, we will use a resistor to represent these electric devices. And that's the symbol for the resistance, and it will stand for these devices. Finally, we have the switch, as shown here, a switch. And if it's open, that means the path is broken and the charge will not flow. Now, there are two kinds of circuits, broadly speaking. There's the series circuit, and that means there's only one path for the charge to follow. And the path starts from the positive terminal. We actually have from the positive terminal always to the negative terminal and notice there's only one path for that charge to follow. Now when we have this flow of, if you will, positive charge, it's called conventional current. It's the flow of positive charge. Now we know in truth it's actually electrons that flow. But for historical reasons we use the flow of positive charge, everything works out fine, and this is what most university textbooks use. And a parallel circuit has more than one path. The current again flows from the positive terminal, uh, comes to the junction, splits up, goes through different paths. There's more than one path to follow. And then it comes back to another junction, and then it'll flow back to the negative terminal. A parallel circuit has more than one path for the current to flow. So you need to know the definition of an electric circuit, a path for charges to follow, DC current, uh, it flows in one direction only, conventional current flows from positive to negative, flow of positive charge, a series circuit, only one path for the charge, parallel circuit, more than one path for the charge.